Hello, happy Friday. Thank goodness it's Friday. It's felt like a very long week to me. So I'm excited it's the weekend. Um, I don't have any big message. I feel like I've been in a little bit of like a stupor of inspiration for videos. And so if you have any that you want me to answer or address, send me your questions. There's been um, some questions that I've answered with like other questions that come in with variations of the same question. So I haven't responded to each individual person, but I kind of try to cover the gist of majority of questions, you know, and clump it into like one topic. Um, so if you have any that you want me to address, I get a lot about like digest digestion and bloating and all those things. I'm not a doctor, so I can't tell you like specifically what's going on. I can't diagnose you basically because I, one, not a doctor and two, it's a very general question that I'm getting about that. Um, but I have had a few of those this week and my short answer to that and my non-medical, I'm not a doctor answer to disclaimer is um, your digestive system, your digestive system will pick up. It will figure out what's going on with your body as you're eating more consistently. It will be shocked at first and it will feel uncomfortable and bloated and crampy and all those things. But if you pull back or you just assume, oh, I must be allergic to that or I'm intolerant of this, then your body's never gonna figure out how to digest it. So for me in my recovery, um, the hardest thing for me was red meat to digest at the beginning because I, I literally avoided it like the plague when I had my eating disorder. So the first time I we went out and got a burger, I was in so much pain that I was literally like in a ball, laying down on the couch, not able, feeling like I'm not able to breathe, right? And of course my eating disorder jumped all over that and was like, it's totally because of the red meat, you should eat it, see? You should totally stay away from red meat. Clearly your body can't take it, that's this is the worst pain. Luckily, I was smart enough to catch that and realize, like, I know enough about nutrition to know that it's probably I don't have digestive enzymes to even digest this. My body feels like it's been poisoned when really it hasn't been. It just was so foreign to it. So I got a digestive enzyme. I would recommend that if you're in recovery struggling with digestive issues. Um, so I got an enzyme, and that started to help me to be able to digest red meat. So, and people will talk about that with dairy. They'll talk about it with gluten. Well, isn't it interesting that those are the things you avoided the most, right? When you were practicing your eating disorder that you're struggling with digesting. So see the correlation there. Don't use it as a reason to avoid it. Um, just all that means is that your body needs more time to get used to digesting it. So there, that's the answer to that question. I wasn't planning on answering that. That's, that's the extent of how I can answer that for you. As far as the bloating and the distension in your stomach, sorry, I don't know what to tell you about that. You're just going to have to deal with it. It's not comfortable. I named my belly Bella throughout my recovery and I would just pat it and be like, it's okay, you're giving me my life back. It's all right, it's all good. You know, I hadn't had rolls on my stomach for 20 years and so of course that was foreign to me. But fact of the matter is, it's like it's kind of inevitable in recovery. If you're really doing your recovery right and you're eating unrestrictedly, it's likely your stomach's gonna blow. It's likely your stomach's gonna distend and be bigger. It's just, it's just, that's biology, like that's gotta happen. So don't try to fight it, don't try to fix it, don't think you're doing something wrong. Embrace it, accept it. Um, that's easier said than done, obviously. Um, so my other thing I just wanted to chime in here, it's the beginning of a weekend. I talked yesterday in a video about having fun, letting yourself have fun. I got a lot of messages in my email saying that like, oh my gosh, it's totally me. Like I feel like I'm trying to recreate fun in my recovery and why doesn't it feel fun? This feels very forced, this feels really hard. And just like I addressed in the video, I figured people would be saying that. I said, just keep doing it. Kind of force it. Keep going until it starts to feel fun. Until the anxiety comes down to a level where you're able to truly enjoy it. Um, so with this weekend coming up, what a great time to challenge that, right? If you don't have some plans that are involving breaking eating disorder rules or going outside of your tiny little bubble, I highly recommend and would encourage you to do that. Make some plans. Um, reach out to someone you haven't talked to in a long time. Go out with yourself. Bring your your headphones and, or I guess, Air, AirPods is what we call them now. Um, bring those and go treat yourself to a yummy dinner. Go get takeout, watch a movie. A lot of times you will feel isolated and you won't have a lot of friends to reach out to and that might feel depressing in your recovery. But that's okay, you can still have fun with yourself until you can get to a point where you're wanting to be social again. Um, so I encourage you this weekend to try 
to set a goal for yourself to do something out of the ordinary, out of the normal eating disorder realm of what you would normally do. And hopefully included in that is going to be eating a lot of food. If you're in recovery, I can't emphasize enough, I can't reassure my clients ever enough that there's not anything that you can eat that I would tell you, oh, that's the wrong thing, or oh, that was too much. There's no upper limit when you're in recovery. You don't have to justify why you need to eat so much. You don't have to have a reason why you're so, so hungry or why you're hungrier the more you eat. It doesn't matter because there's, there's really no rules. There's no limits. We don't have meal plans. We're not following calorie guidelines. So there's really no excuse to not be eating completely unrestrictedly. The only excuse that I hear from people that I work with, and they don't call it this excuse, or they don't even call it an excuse, but it's fear. It's anxiety. And that is not a valid reason to not eat unrestrictedly. So go have a great weekend. Challenge yourself. Go get that really yummy food that you've been craving and you haven't let yourself eat. And try your very darndest to enjoy it and to push that guilt and the eating disorder aside and start telling yourself that you're starting a new life and you're starting a new way of living and it doesn't involve guilt around food anymore. So have a good weekend.